Hey everyone, how's it going? Just getting set up here. Let me get over here. We are all right. So uh, Jeff from Jeffrey from YouTube. Okay. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to me on YouTube, go over to YouTube and subscribe. It's at Randy Steadwell. All right. Um, hit the subscribe. We're trying to get to a hundred. Um, trying to get to a hundred uh, subs. Uh, I want to hit a hundred subs before the end of the year, please. So <laughs> uh, we're at 89 so far. So I uh, just need 11 more. <laughs> uh, I'm just starting. So he says I'm just starting, um, but I'm worried about the rising interest rates may make wholesaling more risky. So, um, so I will say this, that the rising interest rates, it helps us a little bit with wholesaling because we don't actually buy the property but it does become harder to sell the deal. So you have to make sure you get them at the right price. That's the difference is you have to be constantly pivoting. Okay. Um, with the interest rates. That's why when I was just talking about this deal, I discount my ARV by 15% because of the interest rates. Because say if I send it, sell it to a flipper, a flipper, is actually if they're going to take time anywhere from three to four months before it goes back on the market the interest rates may go up and because of that the the arv now comes down okay so you have to be conservative on your numbers if you are conservative on your numbers and get it locked up for the right price then you're good keep that in mind you have to also articulate that to the seller okay if you articulate that to the seller, then I, and, and let them know, everybody knows the interest rates are coming out, but some sellers still think this is a seller's market and they can get whatever they want. Don't get deals locked up for more than you can sell it for. Or if you do let them know, Hey, I'm not going to be taking this down. I'm going to look for a buyer for you. And I've done that with people. So, um, keep that in mind. Now, if anybody else has, a, has any questions, by all means, um, you know, put it in the chat. I'm happy to, uh, you know, answer any questions. You know, if you want to come on video and ask questions, I'm putting the StreamYard link in the chat as well. So on both ends here. And I, uh, Chiquan. You said, awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and then let's see, Jeffrey, you said, that's my concern that, that it works on the back end, uh, of the spread. No, I completely understand. You just have, you as a wholesaler have to do your numbers. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing you have to think now you just pivot. Okay. And a lot of times if they're not selling, get your feedback from your buyers. If you get your feedback from your buyers, then I, you know, now you know what to go back to the seller at. A lot of times if I go back for a price reduction, what I try to do is, uh, what I try to do is try to get feedback. Mike, I appreciate it. Thank you for the subscribe, man. Appreciate it, man. Um, what I try to do get from my buyers and say, Hey, I need to be down here and wherever I tell them, I need to make sure that I have a buyer at that and then we can quickly close. Okay. Um, so what I try to do is, is I talk to my buyers. I say, what would you be at? You know, what price makes this work for you? Things of that nature. Okay. And that way now I can go back to my seller and say, Hey, you know, I need to be here where I built my fee into it. Okay. And, you know, this is kind of where I need, this is the feedback that I'm getting. This is the reasons why, and so on and so forth. If we can make a deal, great. If we can't say, Hey, I'm, we'll be happy to release this and, and kind of go from there, or I can continue to try to find a buyer for you, but this is still where we need to be. Okay. Um, and kind of go from there. So, uh, that's, that's my advice. 
uh, and we would, I would definitely, um, you know, look at doing that. If you, I, uh, I'm working on a, an Excel spreadsheet or a, a, I'm working on a, um, some sort of spreadsheet so that you can easily populate numbers. Uh, but keep in mind, the only person that can make, you know, I'm not going to put an ARV in there for you. You got to put that ARV in there. And you're going to have to discount that ARV because of that. When you're dealing with Detroit and when you're dealing with other areas, Detroit is very hard to comp. So by all means, look at my last week's video and I, and even some of this beginning video, like I, I just showed you how to comp it. Okay. Um, I, you know, again, because of those interest rates, I ha you have to discount the ARV. All right. Um, and kind of go from there. If you find somebody who, who does, pay the higher price great that's awesome but it doesn't a seasoned investor is not going to do that all right so anybody you know who's out there go ahead and ask your questions in the chat and we'd be happy to answer them or come on video happy to work with you and and uh, so it looks like we have uh we have a few people on from facebook and a few people on from youtube so i really appreciate you guys coming from youtube and i uh, you know sharing it i uh, actually being watching me on youtube i really appreciate the algorithm helps us so um awesome so shaniqua shaniquan and i'm sorry if i mispronounced that name thank you for the subscribe i appreciate it so i uh, really do and this is from cody Nor norwick nowick nowicki Sorry, Cody No Wiki. Uh, thanks for doing these lives uh, and answering the questions. Uh, with having a full time gig myself, how would you start integrating wholesaling into a day to day routine? And how did that look when you first got started? Awesome question. Really um, awesome, awesome question on that, Cody. I'm going to be honest with you. It's a little slow, but you know, when I look at things, I, you know, I try to go full out. The problem is, is sometimes some things in the back don't kind of get, um, get pushed into the back. Like for instance, giving attention to my wife and things like that. Cause I like to go full, full heart in everything. So after I get off work, as soon as I get off work, I come home, I, try to unwind, do whatever I can get done within a half hour or, or whatever. And then I'll hit the phones or I'll do whatever I need to get done for that day. So if I have a virtual assistant cold calling for me, they already have some, uh, some leads ready for me to go. Great. Um, if I doing cold calling myself, uh, then I hop on and I do, I start cold calling myself. Now, one thing you want to figure out is you want to think about the flow of your leads. Okay. Um, always think about your, your processes and your orders first. Okay. Uh, so, okay. How do I go from this lay this lead or go from the list? Okay. How do I get the list? What list am I doing? Putting it into a campaign and, or sorry, skip tracing it, putting it into a campaign putting into my dialer, cold calling them, then goes in my CRM where it's a potential lead when they say, yes, I'm ready to sell. So um, that's a big process in between before be, before you even start cold calling. Okay. Um, so you got to think about all that process. If you have to, like sometimes for me, I'm a visual person, write down in a flow chart. Okay on how everything goes and stick to your processes. Okay. You can, as you go, you can edit them. It took me four months to get my first deal. Okay. But every time we learn something, I, I edited the process and, and we adjusted, we did tests. I would not suggest getting 10,000 leads and just start cold calling, take smaller lists and, and test them in different areas. It's going section by section and, and, and test different lists to make sure, um, what, and, and do your, your, do your ROI 
and your KPIs, which is your your key performance indicators and, and things like that. So make sure you're basically what it comes down to is make sure you're tracking everything. If you're tracking everything, now you can look at what is actually working and what is not working. Okay. So, um, and so in my, my advice is, is you use two to three hours after work, do that. Okay. Get as much done as you can. You're concentrating, you're focused. Okay. If you have to, uh, if you want to go a little bit longer, great. Do a little bit longer, but keep in mind, you got to keep your, I don't know if you're married, if you're not, you know, kids, things like that. You got to keep all that, you know, still come, you know, you still got to work on all that type of stuff. So you, you got to fit it in your schedule wherever you can. And you got to be, your family has to be on board with everything as well. Let them know, Hey, between these times, I'm not available. Okay. Anything outside of this? Great. I'll work with you. I'll do whatever we need to get done or plan ahead and go from there. Okay. It's all about just carving out sections of time, whether it be an hour, whether it be two hours, whether it be three hours, start slow, ramp your way up. Okay. It doesn't have to be all at once. All right. So, um, hopefully that helps. And Tracy, uh, Tracy Belinda asked, Randy, do you have a, a list of recommended plumbers, electricians, roofers, uh, in the Detroit area, uh, a resource list. I unfortunately do not, but one thing I do recommend is, is post it in the Facebook group asking for, uh, asking for recommendations. Okay. Now, after you do that and you do vet them, what I mean by vet them is, is ask to look at some of their work, make sure they're able to pull permits, things like that. I don't know what type of work you need, whether it be electrician, plum, uh, plumbers, things like that, whether they need to pull permits or not. But um, also, if you're if it's your first time, make sure they're insured and bonded. Okay, um, that way, if they do something wrong or anything like that, they have insurance. Okay, so with that being said, especially if you're this is your first time, so. I don't know if it is or not, but, um, check their work and, uh, look at, uh, you know, look at the codes, make sure they're, they're pulling the permits, doing the proper work, things, things of that nature that in my opinion, that is the, the best way you can do. Uh, if they show you work and, um, I would also go the extra say if they say, oh yeah, I'm insured, I'm bonded, make sure that their company name, their name is listed on the insurance policy and it's actually there there you should be able to look it up online to see if everything's up to date okay um if there are any if they're licensed then you should be able to uh look online to see if the see if their license is up to date as well so um i unfortunately don't have recommended um plumbers electricians things like that or roofers um I do have, so there is one guy on here that is a uh, licensed or that is a contractor. He, his name is Dan Jones. I would recommend him and, and anything that you do keep in mind, he's a very busy man. Um, and I, but if you reach out to him, if he can help you, he does very good work. So, um, uh, and he does have a, a lot of people that do work for him uh as well so i actually he did a flip uh that we will be posting on our youtube channel we did an interview with him and we did a uh walk through through the house i wholesaled him the house and uh so we got to go through that that will be posted um on youtube hopefully by the end of the year so um i need to talk with him and make sure because we did go over some numbers and I want to make sure that he's okay with that. So, um, but I, it was a beautiful house. He does awesome work. And this one actually needed, needed some framing work or foundation work because it was on a crawl space. So, uh, awesome. No problem, Tracy. You said, thanks for the info. No problem. 
anytime you have any questions, by all means, post it in the group. Metro Detroit Off Market Real Estate Group. Uh, we'll be happy to help you. Anybody would be happy to help you. I'll try to help you as much as I can. Uh, another thing, another reason I don't really recommend people too much, unless I know they do really good work, is because I don't want you coming back on me saying, "Oh, you recommended this guy," you know, things of that nature. Um, but I know Dan Jones; he does really good work. So anybody, he's he is one of the guys that I would recommend for anybody. Um, you know, looking for any for any type of work to get done. So, um, now he's not a roofer, though. I will say that, but he does know a good roofer.